Welcome back to Think Tech. This is Global Connections. I'm Jay Fidel. Let's take a look at the Moscow concert shooting a few days ago. Was it ISIS? Was it Ukraine? Was it someone else? And how does it change the calculus in Russia and everywhere else? Uh, for this discussion, uh, we have Dr. Rupati Khandakar, um, a global geopolitical strategist. She's going to help us understand what happened and why it happened. Welcome to the show, Rupati. Hello, Ajay, and thank you for having me. Um, and let's discuss this Moscow terror attack now. Uh, it goes from country to country, these terror attacks which we're talking about, Jay. And last time we spoke about how Middle East ex uh, terrorism would affect uh, the U.S. And we have to do a program on how terror is affecting Russia. So 137 uh, confirmed that the number is far, far higher, like you said. And um, Jay, when we talk about this, Russia has uh, consequently, subsequently put Ukraine on the uh, radar, right? So let's start with uh, describing what happened in this attack, Jay, that uh, it was in the Crocus uh, City Hall that we see, and there was supposed to be a concert by a Euro-Russian band known as the Picnic. Now, this is the concert hall. And it has a seating capacity of 6,200 people. And uh, uh, it is very uh, difficult because it's a Friday night. People are relaxed. They're going out for a, a normal evening. And this thing happened, which stuns the world. And Jay, uh, when we saw that uh, it has, uh, this hall was packed to its uh, capacity, but it was not yet filled. And it has three levels, this uh, city hall. And we had four, uh, four armed militants with automatic guns. And the shooting took place mainly in the foyer region of the city hall. And that is when uh, we see that they were shooting at point blank range and they were targeting uh, unarmed, uh, unarmed civilians. This entire uh, act of targeting civilians, Jay, is what hurts the most and what terrorists thrive on. Like we have always said time and again, it is the propagation of terror. When you don't, you're not prepared, they're not in the war zone. These are only civilians who are going for a concert. They were, they were uh, Israelis going for a music hall a concert. So this targeting unarmed civilians is um, real terrorism, Jay. We are witnessing real terrorism, real time. And uh, Russia put uh, the blame of this on uh, Ukraine saying that first was ISIS and uh, we have news that uh, the United States had warned Putin about an uh, impending terror attack. But like we know, there are so many warnings and there are so many uh, intimidations given, but we don't take them seriously or rather we think that it is part and parcel of the proceedings. And when something like this happens, really, that is when we understand that this was a real threat. And which materialized so that which and then these four unarmed terrorists escaped in a car uh, near, near the uh, Bryan's region bordering Belarus and Ukraine and this was the car that the uh, Russian forces uh, intercepted and uh, uh, the Russian authorities said there was an opening created for them at the Ukraine uh, border for them to enter. Kiev, uh, vehemently denies any involvement in this because they know what was going to come out of this. And uh, when the terrorists were caught, Jay, they are, all four of them were caught, uh, presented in the uh, trials uh, just a few hours ago, and we saw them bashed and bruised, and rightly so. Uh, they are going to be interrogated, and like you said, there is no death penalty in Russia, but they would wish they had death penalty. Mm. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's, let's examine what happened here. Why is ISIS doing a terror attack in the center of, of Russia uh, on civilians at a concert uh, in the Crocus, Crocus Concert Hall? Why are people coming from southern Russia, um, I guess it was Tashik, Tashikent, Tashkent. Tashkent. Uh, why, why are they coming from Tashkent? Uh, why, are they, why are they coming from ISIS? ISIS-K, 
which actually has its uh, headquarters in uh, Afghanistan. Why are they coming to do violence in Russia? Uh, are they at war with Putin or Russia? What, what is it? Jay, uh, I should be actually attacked. This is not the first time that ISIS has targeted Russia, and Russia uh, continuously indulges with them uh, in the northernmost uh, uh, area, Islamic groups in the north, uh, in the Crox region uh, in Russia, and he has got disputes with them. But uh, Jay, when he when we talk about ISIS being uh, involved head on front with them, the uh, the radicalization of ISIS and the aim and objective of ISIS does not uh, uh, give a clear-cut picture as why they would attack Russia at this juncture. There is no immediate uh, um, uh, trigger for them to do this attack and such an uh, overt attack on uh, Russia. So uh, this, was, this was stunning and it was a terror attack on a, on a um, liberal country. I, I there was a relationship between Putin's fake election only a few days ago and this. Do you think there's a connection? In other words, uh, these guys said, well, he wants to make a fake, a fake election and elect himself, you know, for another term, for, you know, for another term until, I think, 2030. Um, we'll show him a few things. Do you think there's any relationship between one and the other? His elections say he is a, a pseudo-dictator in Russia, and he's elected in 2036. So, um... I, I don't think this would have any effect on his elections. And to present a bad or good picture of Putin, he is not a democratically elected uh, uh, leader. He rules by law, by his law. So uh, uh, getting votes and garnering votes and pleasing the people is not his cup of tea, any which ways. He does yeah. what he wants. And this terror attack would mean uh, just that he strengthens himself more because nationalism is what plays in communist countries uh, or, you know, close, demo uh, close countries, the patriotism. And this only brings the people closer to Putin. They're not going to distance himself, themselves from Putin. I so say the, the, uh, these four, and I, I guess I will have to assume, at least for the moment, that the, the principal actors were only four. Uh, yes. from ISIS, came from Tashkent, had weapons, had inflammable liquids they used to, to burn um, the, the, uh, the concert hall and, and effectively destroy it. And so the people who were wounded or who weren't wounded, uh, a lot of them were killed when, when the roof fell in um, on, the, on the concert hall. Um, and it, it must have been quite a time. Can you imagine being there? It sounds like, uh, you know, they came, they, they shot automatic weapons, they burned the place down, and they were trying to create as much terror, as much violence, as much mm, outrageous murder as they possibly, possibly could. And in that way, you know, it, it, uh, it does remind you of October 7th, doesn't it? Um, the idea is to create the most awful, atro atrocious murder that you possibly can. Is that the way it works these days? Jay, yeah, exactly. This radicalization uh, of ISIS, this uh, tactic that they use. Now, this was these were not military people. These were not military establishments. This was not uh, sensitive points of the government. There was just a city hall playing a concert and normal people going out for an uh, evening after the day of work or enjoying themselves at leisure of citizens, of civilians. And that is when terror strikes, and that is where it hurts the government most because you can't protect every civilian. We had uh, discussed that there is no line of defense against terrorism. When you have four unarmed people uh, attacking uh, uh, a hall packed of, uh, full of 6,200 people, just check the asymmetry. Yeah. It is really difficult to protect and... Uh, shield every civilian from such an attack. It could be anyone. It could have been one of them. They could have bought a ticket and blown themselves up in the hall. So they have so many means and ways to go about. Yeah. Well, so and this, it's, it's also reminiscent of the uh, um, Beslan school uh, siege and hostage yeah. crisis and massacre that took place uh, in southern Russia, um, in, I guess in Chechnya in 2004 just 20 years ago. And when the reporters say this is the worst 
um, terrorist violence in Russia in the past 20 years, you ask yourself, what happened 20 years ago? Well, the Beslan school siege and hostage crisis and massacre happened in 2004, just 20 years ago, in which thousands of people were involved, including, you know, hundreds and hundreds of, um, of school children, elementary school children, which was really shock the conscience kind of violence. And although there were those who said uh, that Putin himself created that uh, to use as a provocation, a provocation to consolidate his power, and indeed um, his reaction to that en enhanced his power, um, uh, I I'm not sure that he was the one who created the crisis, but he certainly took advantage of the crisis, and he went after the Chechnyans over it, um, and he became more powerful for it. Uh, it's an opportunity. And um, so then you make a comparison between the Beslan school crisis uh, and this, and you say to yourself, well, uh, for Putin, uh, even if he didn't do it himself as a provocation, he used it, he will use it um, to maximum advantage uh, to enhance his own power. And that's the discussion we need to have. What will he do now, just like the Beslan school crisis? What will he do with this crisis to enhance his own power? Yeah, Jay, uh, see, the ISIS was a militant group which emerged in eastern Afghanistan in 2014. They claimed uh, responsibility for this attack immediately. But Putin directly pointed at Kiev because uh, security has been a very central point of Vladimir Putin's uh, presidency. And he sees this as an opportunity, you know, as uh, uh, he, like, you said he can't fight on all two fronts. He can't take on the ISIS and Ukraine at the same time. He has to focus on one front if he wants to win this war. And uh, though he will deal with ISIS, if it's ISIS responsible, he will go after them, but not, uh, he'll, it'll be covert. He will not declare it. He will just declare his war on Ukraine. And the ramifications of this terror attack will be that he will strengthen his um, aggressiveness towards Ukraine. Now he has got no um, uh, limitations on him, Jay. It is all going to be uh, vengeance for this terror attack. He is going to head, go head on uh, into Ukraine and do um, everything is going to be justification for this terror attack. Yeah, and, uh, well, that, that's, the, that's the awful part of it. Uh, Ukraine denies responsibility for the, the attack, and, I, and I, I believe that. Um, I don't think they would do that as, at this point in time, especially given the fact that, um, you know, billions are at risk uh, in terms of support from the uh, EU and from the United States. They can't act badly and uh, do an attack like this. So I think you have to believe they're rational. They're not going to uh, do an atrocious attack like this. And nevertheless, uh, it really works well for Putin to blame them and then to use it as justification to a ratchet up the war against them. And he can justify that in his propaganda. Uh, and I'm sure, well, already he is making disinformation to uh, the Russian people. He is saying, uh, I don't believe this was really ISIS. They took responsibility, but I don't believe it. Uh, this is really the Ukrainians. Look where we caught them. We caught them near the Ukrainian border. And that tells us, uh, you know, they were trying to return to their friends in Ukraine. They were sent by Ukraine. Um, and therefore, let's really, you know, bomb, bomb Ukraine into uh, oblivion now, uh, much worse than before, and, and get the Russian people to back him up on that. Because, you know, he has, he has problems with the Russian people and the way to deal with those problems, you know, about supporting him. Uh, the way to deal with those problems is to give them propaganda, lie to them. And the big question, okay, and I would put this to you, although nobody has an answer, uh, is the, are the Russian people going to buy it? They keep seeing their sons and uh, soldiers coming back in body bags, um, and they, they suspect perhaps, but they, don't, they can't say it out loud, uh, that Putin is lying to them about Navalny and others uh, who oppose him, about Prigozhin and others in the army. Um, they, they, they may be questioning uh, whether he's, you know, telling him the truth. But this helps him, I think. And the question is whether they will believe him in the propaganda when he says, no, 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 
This wasn't ISIS. This was the Ukraine. And for that matter, it was Western Europe and the United States. This is all our enemies packaged all at the same time. They're the ones who did this to us. We must respond. Um, do you think the Russians will buy that? Uh, Jay, uh, we live in liberal democracies, and when we see a terror attack of any scale happening to us, we kind of unite, and we give the government uh, the entire autonomy to act. We see that, you know, that shock uh, brings uh, the nation closer. The same thing will happen in Russia. The same thing that the people will come together for the sake of the country. It's a terror attack on Russia. And then it comes right of self-defense, and then your leader becomes supreme. And that cycle is uh, uniform in every country. And uh, to oppose your leader at a time when the country is in need never happens to you. And Islamophobia is a reality now. In the United Nations, there was a resolution passed by uh, China and Russia uh, about Islamophobia. 114 countries voted for it. That it is real. It is happening. And they don't want that to happen. But terrorism has a majority face, and that comes across it. Islam, ISIS, Islamophobia, it comes out. And the country then really takes the side of the lesser evil. That is happening in Russia. So mm -hmm. now Putin seems like a lesser evil, and he seems like a savior and protector of, uh, you know, the lighting effect. When he's lighting the candle, his eyes, his, uh, his emotions for uh, Russia. Russia's, Russia becomes supreme. So uh, the people are never ever going to question him now. I mean, uh, Navalsky, uh, Navalsky will go a little bit in the background. You know, the anti-Putin agencies will have to take a step back. It happens. Mm, uh, you know, this, this raises some, you know, some interesting things that we didn't know. I mean, it raises... Uh, one thing as i thought that, that isis was no more um but that's really not true I, isis is still alive and well it doesn't have a headquarters the way it used to have in in syria and iraq um it's in afghanistan now uh, they call it isis k and it's not like a special a special breakfast cereal isis k and they're particularly violent and they're and they're giving uh, you know, the uh, Afghanistanis a headache, too. And so yes. they operate out of Afghanistan just, just the way uh, the terrorists operated on 9-11 out of Afghanistan. Um, the other thing is uh, that I didn't know is that, is that Russia has had a lot of Muslims, lots of them, from the South mostly, and a fair number of them are terrorists or susceptible to terrorism and that um, Putin has had a problem in dealing with them over the years. This didn't yes. happen in, in a vacuum. Um, this has been something that um, he has been aware of, but has not shared on, on his propaganda. He sort of uh, ignores it. Uh, just the way he ignored the ISIS um, statement that taking responsibility, he blew that off. It's interesting. And he went right to, um, you know, blame Ukraine because that's his agenda uh, to, you know, marshal all his forces and all his propaganda um, against Ukraine. But the fact is that that there, are, there, there's a problem uh, with the Islamic State uh, and with you know other terrorist groups inside of Russia. Now we know the Russian people may never realize it because he's not going to tell them. Um, but but the fact is that he has a problem, and it's not going to get better. And he can put the FSB on all of them. He's going to interrogate these four guys till the cows come home. They wish they will wish they were dead by the time the FSB is finished with them. Um, God knows where they're going to go. I mean, Navalny had a, a quiet death compared to what's going to happen to these guys. There is no death penalty in Russia, so they'll take it all away on torture. Um, anyway. And bottom line is uh, this reveals, at least to the West, uh, the problem for Putin. Let me add that a few weeks ago, the United States shared intelligence with Putin. And they told Putin, you are going to have a terror attack, and it is going to be in a public place where people gather, like a concert. Wow, what a premonition that was. 
they must have had the U.S. intelligence agency agencies must have had some pretty interesting intelligence to be able to make a prediction that that accurate. Um, and uh, of course, he blames the U.S., but the fact is the a the U.S. has intelligence about what's cooking in Russia in the Islamic State community in Russia, um, and they shared it with him. You know, here we are uh, with an adversary and a war in Ukraine. We're on both different sides of the fence, and yet they shared that intelligence with him. I'm not sure exactly why they did that. It's, it reminds me, actually, of, of the uh, titanium issue, where we found in the newspaper a few days ago that the United States was buying titanium from Russia at an expense of hundreds of millions of dollars. So we have these sanctions going, and sanctions with a small s, that don't have that much effect on Russia. And we are at the same time buying uh, precious resources, minerals, uh, from Russia in the form of you know, titanium. So it's a, it's a bittersweet, um, you know, mixed bag connection we have, where we share intelligence with them to ostensibly try to protect them. And, and of course, Putin blew that off. He characterized that warning as, quote, I, I'm not kidding you, blackmail, blackmail. That was the U.S. trying to blackmail him. So, you know, we're in a strange position where, you know, no kindness ever goes unpunished. We try to help the guy, and he blames us for what, what happened. So this, you know, raises interesting questions about the relationship of the EU, whether they believe Putin's propaganda, whether the, let me call it the base, you know, the, the right wing, the right flank in Europe um, believe Putin's propaganda about it being the fault of Ukraine, and whether the base here, whether Trump uh, and Mike Johnson believe it. Um, you know, how much traction do you think Putin is going to have outside of Russia about trying to blame Ukraine for this attack? Uh, Jeff, this ISIS Khorasan um, is a byproduct of uh, the policies of the superpowers in the Middle East. So uh, this, these people got armed. They started off as uh, uh, something against anti-state, but then when they withdrew and they became something like cash for one deal or cash, uh, you know, uh, Putin has spoken about this a few years back in a conference. That now ISIS works as you 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 want something done, you pay us and we get it done. They had been reduced to that uh, after they went into oblivion, and they were reduced in, uh, to oblivion because of the crackdown on terror financing in the international system. Uh, the uh, that's why they changed the name from ISIS to ISIS K. I told you these Islamic outfits, uh, terrorist outfits, when you ban their accounts. They change a wording or letter and they start new accounts. So that that's what happened with ISIS to ISIS K. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, these people kept their uh, uh, activities on because they, it's very easy for them to create like this uh, 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 havoc in a system. And like you said, uh, US and Russia have been dealing financially in uh, uh, trade and everything. Because uh, Jay, there is a strategic geopolitical interdependence that nothing can change. You know, political events and all, they'll continue. But there is a strategic interdependence amongst countries, which always continues irrespective of what happens. So uh, uh, dealings of uh, uh, Russia and the U.S. will always take prime precedence over other issues. If it comes to a point when they have to come together to fight terrorism, they will do that for sure. Too. They will override their differences because they are responsible superpowers. That's what's the difference between uh, a nuclear weapon coming in the hands of a rogue state like Iran and the nuclear, you know, thousands of nuclear arsenal resting with Russia and uh, America. They are responsible superpowers. The responsibility that they take in the economy, in their uh, uh, military front in their uh, future uh, thinking they have a foresight terrorist states rogue rogue uh, outfits they don't have a foresight they think about now that uh, immediate effect they don't think about the future 
Repercussions is a no, nothing, nothing for them. You know, you sound like I'm in Dean, uh, who we uh, we talked about a couple of times ago. He's the guy who used to be with, um, I, he was with ISIS. Um, and then he, uh, you know, sort of turned on that and, and uh, began consulting with the West on exactly what was going on with ISIS. And, and he talked about the differentiation between being a legitimate state, even if you're a rogue state, and your primary mission is to, is to provide the security for your people. So they didn't have to worry about a lack of security. They didn't have to worry about this kind of, um, you know, um, a terrorist attack. Um, and then you have these non-state actors, and I'm afraid to say that they, a lot of them seem to be generated right out of Islam. Uh, these various terror groups are all they all they're all hijacked from uh, Islam, and so um, they're not uh, they're not state state uh, entities, uh, and those are the ones we have to worry about. And you know, and I and I pose to you as a geopolitical analyst person, Rupmati, are we involved in some kind of change where states, even rogue states, uh, cannot provide security for their people um, because of these non-state actors who go out and do terror? Um, you know, it, it almost sounds like we're sliding into a new world where the, the terrorists who strike at random, who do outrageous and atrocious things, they're the ones who control um, you know, the, 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 the personal security of the individuals who are in the states and citizens of the states. Uh, is, is things changing globally? Very much, very much. Now, immediately France announced a terror alert in uh, Fran France. So what happens? Uh, the traveling, the restrictions, the movement in France gets uh, restricted. And uh, Jay, uh, when these terror attacks happen, now when we look at the Russian uh, terror attack, these are four uh, uh, persons who have come with a backpack in a car. They are carrying four automatic guns and they have created havoc in the entire world. Terror in the entire world. So uh, they don't need a lot of equipment to do this. They need just one personal, uh, what is that, personal ammunition and just create, spread the terror. And that terror has a lot of repercussions and um, on every person's uh, uh, movement, Jay, we have security checks, airport security checks coming in. We have uh, uh, people uh, uh, being viewed with suspicion at uh, every nook and corner. Jay. And that's what hurts. You really don't know. There is a lot of suspicion. And when suspicion happens, your movement uh, falls down. And modern world, modern world is coming it developed to a point that there is freedom freedom of movement freedom of uh, interacting freedom of uh, uh, intermingling of cultures like this there is implosion and you go back to being closed you be, get back to setting boundaries and these boundaries Jay, uh, they will come in every country now the swinging uh, uh, movement that used to happen it used to happen amongst all 41 countries you were free to move now because of the immigrant problem everything they are being questioned if you have an uh, entry into uh, switzerland why are you entering through uh, france they question this now so it's going to go step by step but i tell you because of these non-state actors it's a big problem that you uh, mentioned very uh, uh, properly jay hamas and palestine palestine a state the hamas a uh, uh, terror outfit we talk about the lines getting blurred and we speak about Hamas, uh, the terror outfit, which carried a terrorist attack on the state of Israel. But how many people speak about it as Israel versus Palestine? These lines get blurred. Now, Russia will always have in their heart, they'll have suspicion towards uh, Middle Eastern terrorism. Though these people may not be from, they must be from Tashkent, they must be from Tajikistan, Central Asian province. You never know. Radicalization does not require too much, Jay. It just requires your mind and indoctrination. A terror attack. Well, you know, what's, what's interesting is that this, that when you have repeated terror attacks, um, such as Israel has experienced, and, uh, you know, it's an interesting comparison, such as the Palestinians themselves have experienced. You know, Hamas took over 
the Palestinians in Gaza. Uh, they made it impossible for you to be a responsible citizen. They made it impossible for you to have a responsible government or a responsible economy. They changed Palestine. Palestinians. They changed Gaza after Israel left in the early 2000s. And so, you know, you look at these things and you say, hmm, people get hardened. The society changes to deal with the unpredictable terrorist attack that could happen anytime. And arguably, it happens more and it happens worse now. Um, so if you have it happening in a given country or uh, region, um, then you have, you have the society changes to deal with it. Uh, and it, that's very sad because I mean, think about it. You're going to a, you want, you're going to go to a concert? No, no I'm not no. going to any any public groups right now. And that was the warning the United States gave to um, you know Putin a few weeks ago. Uh, it, it's groups of people that are at great risk. And so, just at the surface, it it affects the arts. It affects um, you know public public theater. And public entertainment, public gatherings, which, you know, as they knew from the Greek and Roman times, this is the most important part of our of society, of Western society anyway, of any society, that you have the ability to be in the town square, so to speak, to talk to people, to engage with them, and not to be isolated at home or away from others. And so if you if you threaten any group of people, you change society, you change the public conversation. And I'm serious. I, I think this kind of thing will happen. And to the extent that it happened in Russia, it could also happen in the United States. We could have increased terrorism um, by the Islamic State or others, and they've shown us they can do it, uh, and other countries. Western Europe, for example, you see an increasing amount of this terrorism at random and increasingly atrocious with effect. It's hard to measure the effect, but with some effect on the society in general. So I have one question that comes out of all of that for you, Rupati. So if I'm a member of ISIS, or ISIS-K as the case may be, and I see that Putin says, um, I don't think it was ISIS. It was really Ukraine and the West. It was Ukraine and the EU and NATO uh, and, and the United States that made this happen uh, in the center of Moscow. So I'm going to blame them. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to increase my uh, aggression against Ukraine. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight Ukraine all the more aggressively. Okay. So what do I then, as a member of ISIS, think about my next attack in Russia? Is it going to be sooner or later? If I want to prove my point and terrorize people in Russia uh, and attack more groups in, in more atrocious ways, am I going to wait or am I going to do it now while Putin is, is, you know, is beating his breast about Ukraine? Wouldn't it be a great idea to have another attack now and show the world um, that ISIS can do it and that it is not Ukraine, it's ISIS? If they took responsibility for the, the thing last weekend, uh, they're going to want to make their point again, don't you think? I, I suggest to you that this may actually uh, step up the risk of further attacks by terrorists in Russia. I mean, that is when Putin lies about the source of it being Ukraine. What do you think? Yeah, Jay, uh, most probably terror attacks do not stop. They, they, they don't, uh, their motive. They is not served. Their motive is to create a um, state, ISIS state, all over the globe. So that will never stop. And uh, Jay, uh, to say uh, this, uh, talk about this, there was no valid reason for ISIS to carry out an attack in Russia. There was no immediate uh, trigger for ISIS to carry out an attack on Russia. Uh, nothing happened. Uh, Putin uh, did not have aggressive policies against any Islamic State or any uh, terror outfit. He has just been busy with Ukraine for the last two, three years. This was a diversion or it was, you know, um, uh, uh, cash for deed, a deed for cash uh, only, uh, isolated incident or four people could have been easily bought to create uh, this terror attack. It is not, ISIS doesn't have any aim to achieve against Russia. They have been carrying out 
attacks and troubling niggling uh, putin but never a concerted over to uh, attack to overthrow the government of russia they don't have any uh, agenda versus russia so isis claiming responsibility seem like a dicey thing from the very start from the very beginning but ukraine being involved in it now this becomes like a, a fbi investigation jay who did it who has done it has putin done it himself there are the questions that has putin done it himself is a uh, key really ukraine really involved in it? their frustrations at losing the war uh, coming out or uh, you know to dent putin's popularity after the elections uh, because uh, russian people do have a strong nationalism uh, streak in them jay they do love their country more than the outside world and they do support the president of 24 years when two and a half decades they have been supporting putin so he is not a stranger to them he is like family to them and uh, they support him so uh, who is the troublemaker in this entire system uh, has to be uh, brought out jay and uh, um, isis coming out so forth in claiming uh, a responsibility what will happen if they claim response what will they get there was nothing to achieve for isis so isis claiming responsibility becomes a very very dicey issue yeah well you know i i, I have a a thought here i'll express it to you and see yeah. uh, if you agree um he's going to putin is going to get more aggressive in dealing with ukraine because he's going to capitalize uh, on what happened at the concert hall um you know as a, an opportunity um he he'll he'll do a lot of investigation through these four people that they captured uh, and find out as much as he can about you know terror cells uh, in in russia i'm not sure he's going to get anywhere with that because there are many terror cells in russia um and and as a result of the increased aggression um that he um mounts against ukraine um i suggest to you that the the people in the eu will see it as even more emergent than they did before um they'll say hmm putin is really determined now uh, we have to provide support um for um ukraine and in this country you know there's only a majority of only one republican in the house one more republican you know drops out in favor of a democrat and it'll be even steven or worse for the republicans and at that point you know we're going to have a lot of pressure um to provide aid and weapons uh for ukraine so it may be only a matter of time before everybody gets wise to putin and decides they are going to support ukraine more actively and if that's the case putin is really going to have a problem because ukraine with more weapons more money will be able to do more in in beating off putin and in fact in in attacking infrastructure and the like in russia so um if he does what it looks like he's going to do it may backfire your thoughts so he will get more aggressive in uh, ukraine and uh, say he has woven it into the fabric of russian politics in the recent years this ukraine conflict he has won the elections he is very safe he has kept this front going because it serves his uh, uh, point well that he talks of russia russia as a superpower uh, uh, ukraine is now just one side point for him. now he is trying to come into mainstream politics by coming now you see the terror attack has brought him back when everybody writes we stand with russia he comes right back into uh, 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 global diplomacy the person who was isolated war criminal and then now we stand with russia because a terror attack is something which hurts every liberal uh, democracy and every uh, freedom loving citizen of the world so uh, he comes back right back into the sympathy that russia got out of this attack is what serves him well and ukraine getting more weapons and fighting in the front they are going to continue this for a long time because zelensky also in his fatigues he uh, he is used to this it is it is now become really i'm telling you it's become routine for them it, they are not taking it as a, a urgent uh, war or you know something to achieve none of them have clear means 
on near objectives what they want. No, uh, uh, Putin wants to take over entire of Ukraine. They just want them not to join NATO. No, Ukraine wants to, uh, uh, you know, it's very happy collecting money and continuing their uh, struggle with Russia. But nothing, and uh, they keep on asking for membership of NATO. So this is like this ongoing conflict that they've kept it on. It's a good funding uh, idea for Ukraine, don't you think, Jay? Well, yeah, but you know, all of this reflects, um, you know, a, a deterioration of security, yes. of national security, of regional security, and for that matter, taking it together of global security. So we live in a time when um, regional, national, and global security has never been so questioned and questionable. So I'm 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 more worried than I was before this <laughs> happened. Because then I think it has implications far beyond Moscow and Russia and Putin. Well, thank you, Ramadi. Ramadi Kandakar, a, a, a global strategist, a geopolitical analyst. Thank you so much for joining us for this discussion. We'll do it again soon. Thank you so much. Aloha. Aloha. liked this show, why don't you give us a like or subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much.